My name is Steven Prachner. I'm the program manager for the PIC CPU tools in the gaming division at Microsoft. This is the second in a series of four videos introducing the new implementation of timing captures in PICs. In this video, I'll cover the new Range Details view. Range Details provides a tabular view with which to analyze your capture data. In previous timing captures, we took all the data in the capture and populated a single events list when the capture was first open. With the volumes of data you can now capture, that approach is no longer practical, or useful for that matter. Instead, with new timing captures, the range details view is populated based on a region of time you've selected. So as I start to drag select a region of time in the timeline, the ribbon is updated to show me how much time I'm selecting. Then when I complete my selection, the range details view is populated with the data from all threads and cores for that region of time. By default, range details displays pick CPU events. So we show you the columns you'd expect, like start time, end time, and duration. You can change the type of data to view using this drop-down called items to show. You can view data such as GPU data, GPU work, context switches, CPU samples, and so on. So one of the most common uses of range details is to sort data based on one or more columns. While viewing PIC CPU events, for example, it's common to sort the table by duration in order to find the most expensive instances of a given event. One of the improvements we've made compared to previous timing captures is the ability to sort hierarchical data. For example, if I expand this hierarchy a few levels, and then sort by duration by clicking on the duration column, you can see that the hierarchy of my events is preserved, whereas in old timing captures, that hierarchy would be lost. A few other things to point out about this view. First is the selector panel on the left of side of the view. I'm looking at PIX events here, and range details includes data for all threads that have events by default. But say I want to focus on just my main thread and my render threads. I can use the selector to filter data to just those threads. So I'll start by deselecting all of them and then clicking the checkboxes next to the threads that I want to view. The next thing I'd like to point out is the use of color in this view. By default, PIX assigns a color to each thread and core, and we use that color to make it easier to see which thread an event is running on. So the color of the box in the threads column in range details matches the color of the thread in the timeline. For example, the color of my main app thread in range details matches the color of the app main thread in the timeline, an aqua blue color in this case. We've also made some improvements to navigation between the range details view, element details, and the timeline. So if I select this event named Render Worker Process, you can see the Element Details view populates with details about that event. Now, I can use the Show in Timeline button to jump directly to this event. You'll see that my Render Worker event is now selected in the timeline and scrolled into view. So while it's most common to select your range of time using the mouse, there are a few other techniques you might find useful based on your scenario. These options are provided by a drop-down menu attached to this time range box. The first option, Use Selected Events, lets you populate range details with the data corresponding to the time range represented by the event or set of events that you've selected. So for example, I'm going to scroll back up to my main thread, zoom in until I can see a few frames. Let's say I want to look at this frame and this frame. So I select them both and say use selected events. So range details now contains the data for those two frame events and any other events that we're executing on different threads in that same time range. The other option you might find convenient is use current timeline viewport. This option populates range details with all the data that is currently visible in the timeline. The last thing I'd like to cover is the set of display options. 
These are available by expanding this panel on the right-hand side of the view. By default, the contents of range details changes anytime you select a new range in the timeline. If you don't want this behavior, select Do Not Sync from the Time Range dropdown. The final option is the ability to expand or collapse the hierarchy. So child events are drawn indented from their parents. To collapse the hierarchy, deselect the Show Hierarchy checkbox. This will cause events to be drawn in a flat list. Oh, to summarize, Range Details offers a tabular way to analyze your profiling data. Sorting is a common scenario, for example. Range Details is most commonly populated by a time range selection using the mouse. However, there are other techniques, including the ability to populate the view based on a set of selected events. Thank you.